of oil, little change today. There are signs of somewhat muted demand in the United States. Meanwhile, in China, the appetite for raw materials, including crude, has shrunk over the past six months, or at least the first half of the year. But our guest says the oil environment is not as weak as it's made out to be. Uh, however, continued consolidation among American producers could be a sign uh, or could be a, a foretaste of weakening U.S. crude production. We're joined by Cole Smead, President and Portfolio Manager at Smead Capital Management. Cole, thanks very much for coming on the show. Um, if, yeah. if you were to put bets on as to whether crude goes up over the next six months or goes down WTI, which way would you lean? Well, thanks for having me, Andrew. Uh, use, use today's uh, you know, economic growth news coming off of China just as a picture. Um, normally, you'd get news like that, and you'd expect to just kind of cover your head for the falling price of oil. And you know, prices are marginally down, but there's not much impact based on that news. So I, I, I put it like this. Um, you know, in the prior big oil uh, market, which was the early 2000s to the peak in 08, um, China was the marginal buyer. They were the demand on the margin. And that is not swaying prices like it did in the past. I think, I think oil's really climbed a wall of worry. Um, and despite that, you wake up in the low to mid 80s and everyone is not very excited. And yet <laughs> prices have stayed very firm. Uh, in the oil market, kind of, uh, pointing to underlying support, do you think? Yeah, I think there's underlying support. And I think, I think what it comes down to is the inability to invest. Um, you, you've, you and I have talked about this a couple times, but um, what we're dealing with here on the American production side is effectively shareholders are not willing to capitalize these assets or these businesses unless they get a lot of uh, return back. In other words, the, the cost of capital is much higher in the minds of the investors. And what that's doing is that's really starving for new projects. So, you know, we, we, could, I, we think we're looking at a world where we're going to be either talking about the lack of growth of Permian production, for example, or maybe just flat production. Um, and and I, I point all that out because I think that's not true for a lot of Canadian assets and therefore creates a much different scenario as demand continues to grow, but it's just not going to come via American production. That's interesting because these, these companies combining, uh, well, I guess they're going to want to show their, after big takeovers, they're going to want to show shareholders rising cash flow so they may be reluctant to yeah. invest heavily in CapEx. Yeah, I think if you just go out and look at any company that's come out and tried to announce that they're going to increase uh, production or they have to increase their costs to maintain their existing production, what you're going to find is stocks that have been treated very poorly by the stock market in the interim. Now, some of that uh, sh it could be merit. If you want to grow your production into a tighter world where not all can produce, I think that's a very attractive thing. So look at what Strathcona is, for example, doing. They're going to grow production. I think their long-term goal is to get to 320,000 barrels um, a day. Um, that's a big number. You just don't hear oil companies saying stuff like that. I think that's the difference between the people that want to get really wealthy in the oil business like Adam Watrous does versus what everyone else is doing. So I think that's kind of a good lens and paradigm to think about who's growing production because they're very optimistic about the future and who is just really maintaining production or slightly growing it um, because they really just want to please their shareholders, which I, I, I'm not saying that they shouldn't want to buy back stock. I'm not saying they shouldn't want to pay dividends, but it asks the question as demand has continued to grow, can we continue to grow the, the pie of production? Mm -hmm. And so far, the Saudis aren't supplying, the Americans might not look like they'll be able to supply, so where's that supply gonna come from? You have some Canadian ideas for us. Um, can we start off with Strathcona? Because I think it's a stock you've favored for a while. And they've announced that they're, um, well, they struck a deal, an outline deal, to go ahead with a $2 billion carbon capture project. Taxpayers will be providing a lot of support here. What's your view on that plan, though, Cole? Yeah, it, it's uh, what it looks like to us is, to your point, there's going to be a lot of grants uh, involved in that. But um, if you're a company that has to go out and pay taxes, uh, on effectively emissions, and, and you look and say, great, I'm gonna have to pay that cost regardless. Why don't I put working capital into uh, an asset that I can build over time and make marketable to other parties? I think that's effectively the rub. They're gonna take what would be normal cost to them on the tax side and move that into this uh, project. And I think what they could wake up is with an asset that's worth something real. Now, just so everyone's on the same page, um, there are people that doubt whether carbon capture is a real business. But again, to your point on, on what the government's going to put in, the grants are there 
to where if so the government says, hey, I'm, I'm gonna fund you for maybe a half a billion dollars, do you wanna build an asset? Hell yes, I'm interested in building an asset if I can get a half a billion dollars. So, so I, I think that's the reality of the situation is there's just a lot of money there to mm -hmm. just theorize and, and, and uh, see what you could do in lieu of paying taxes. Okay, um, you have a couple of oil sands related ideas. I mean, the, the Strathcona is an oil sands project as well, uh, SAG-D, but Meg and Sonovas are two stocks you favor. Would you prefer them over Canadian Natural? Uh, we, we, we do. Uh, let me just comment on Meg. One of, the, one of the things that Meg was talking about this last week up in Calgary at the Stampede is, you know, the idea of a, a maybe, a, you know, a new dividend showing up, uh, a regular dividend being small. And you, uh, your viewers should remember that Meg won't probably be paying cash taxes till sometime in 2027. And so we would be, we, we would push Meg to say, why, why not hold off on that dividend until you start paying cash taxes because your cost of capital goes higher once the government gets back into your income stream. And so we would really, uh, we would really push them towards just doing buybacks until they're paying cash taxes again, and then reasserting, you know, what their capital allocation is once once the government's actually collecting some income from at that point. So I mean, I, I think I think what you know Meg has in common with Strathcona, which also has in common with Synovus, compared to the American producers to our discussion a second ago, is long reserve life. In other words, these are long life assets, and and that's really Canada's forte right now is the, the long reserve life of these assets um, versus their American colleagues that are, you know, have much shorter reserve life on the mm -hmm. assets currently. We'd better jump, Cole. It's always great um, hearing from you. Actually, before we let you go very quickly, and I'm sorry we're tight for time, natural gas, are you seeing any value there? Are you interested in specialized nat gas producers right now? Uh, we, we don't own any. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I think M Michael Rose is a genius at tourmaline. All I'd say is I, I generally not like the natural gas business because at the bottom, mm -hmm. the oil person next door to you is always producing at a loss. Yes. And the natural gas person has to shut their production off. And that, that's just tough yeah. for me to get around mentally. Cole, always great hearing from you. Thanks very much. Good